But I really have never entered into the portals of the glory world. Amen. Praise the Lord. But I tell you what, you know, if we really want to do anything, we've got to have some basic instructions. Nobody ever started off playing an instrument that they didn't get some basic instructions. Nobody was ever a carpenter that they didn't get some basic instructions. Amen. Had to have some basic instructions in order to be able to go on. Amen. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm on a journey. That this is a one-time trip. I've never been this way before. Hallelujah. But Brother Steve, I want to make it to the end. And I got to thinking about this situation of this trip to heaven. And, and you know, we need some basic instructions. A lot of folks don't want you to tell them nothing. They don't want no instructions. They just want to go ahead and do their thing and think everything's all right. It don't work that way. If you're going to be good at anything or you want to do something new, you're going to have to do some kind of a studying, amen, to find out what it's all about. And I'm afraid there's nobody studying this great plan of salvation. They're just jumping in and doing their own thing and saying, I believe in, in Jesus, amen. They're not keeping his commandments, and, and they're on their way to heaven. I got news for you. They don't even know what they're looking for, amen. All I know is what the description is that the Bible gives. Amen, but I'm looking for a city. Praise the Lord forever. If you have your Bibles, turn with us and start out to 2 Timothy, the second chapter and the 15th verse. Amen. And I want us to try to just, if I can, I want to try to bring this out the way the Lord gave me. And I tell you, folks, somehow it's different when you're sitting home studying. And especially if you've studied on this thing all week, amen, and it's been rolling over your mind. It's a little hard to bring it all out when you get before a congregation. Because you don't have the time, amen, and that's why I need the Holy Ghost tonight to bring it back to my mind. Praise the Lord forever. But I, I want us to go over there, if you will, to Second Timothy, the second chapter. I just want to read that 15th verse, amen, and listen to what it says. Now, how many is wanting to go to heaven? Amen. You really want to go to heaven? Then we're going to have to try to find the way, aren't we? Amen. And, and I got news for you. None of us knew the way when we started out. When we started on this journey, we did not know the way. We had been going in our own way and wandering around here and there. Amen. But he says here, he's a study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. There's some studying got to be done. We've got to try to figure out what it's going to take for us to get to heaven. Father, I come before you tonight thanking you for this privilege that we have to come, Lord God, into your midst. And I'm asking you, Father, tonight to help us, Lord, to bring out this word. And God, that we might be able to use it in a parable that folks could be able to understand it. God, bring to our remembrance what you spoke to our heart. And God, I pray that you'd touch every need that's here tonight. Lord, you see the hearts of this people. You see, God, the way that the enemy's been working and worked all week and the way he's still working. But God, we know that you have authority over him. And Father, that you've given, given us authority over him also. Each and every one, Lord God, you said in your word, if we'd resist the devil, he'd flee from us. And Lord, you said if we'd draw nigh to you, you'd draw nigh to us. And God, we're asking tonight to, to help us to bring forth this word, Lord God, in such a manner that it'd be understood, Lord God, and it might cause us, uh, Lord, to draw closer to you. We ask it in the name of Jesus for his honor and for his glory. Amen and amen. As I begin to think about this, I begin to think about just basic instructions. And my mind went back to several years ago. I guess it was probably back in the early 80s, amen. And most of you know I love to fish, amen. Haven't done much of it because I don't want it to get a hold of me. I want to keep hold on it, amen. But I, I love to fish, and I got to hearing all these stories about fishing offshore, amen, and Made a trip or two out there with some of those fellas. And, you know, they don't tell you nothing about what they're doing, about how to get out there and how to do it. They just go out there and you ride along on their boat and they say, all right, let's fish here. Amen. So you drop an anchor and you fish there. Amen. But when it comes down to it and you've got to do it on your own, it's a whole different story because you don't know what you're going to face out there. You don't know what the weather's going to be. I didn't know how to even start out, but I did know this. You had to have a compass. You had to have something to guide you. 
Amen. So I figured I better do a little bit of studying on that thing. Amen. So I got to looking into it to see what it would take for me to go. And I got to figuring the safest place for me to go according to the charts that I had was Nine Mile Reef. It was nine miles dead east of Mayport. Amen. And I felt like it, that would be the safest place for me to go the first time out. They said there's a marker out there. They didn't tell me whether it was a tower. They didn't tell me whether it was a small buoy. They didn't tell me what it was. But they said there's a flag. Amen. And so when I left out, I didn't know what I was going to look for. I didn't know what I would see. But I knew that according to the chart that I had, if I got 90 degrees and it stayed on 90 degrees, and I want you to realize that's a straight line. That's not zagging off over here and off over here. It's a straight line. Anywhere as you travel offshore, it's going to be a straight line if you're going to get to the destination that you're headed for. Amen. And I got to thinking about this trip to heaven. It's going to be a straight line. Amen. If we're going to make it to heaven, it's going to be a straight line. But we've got to have some basic instructions in order for us to make it to heaven. Amen. And I got to thinking about, well, where uh, would I get the instructions? Well, the Bible, if I understand it right, it's B-I-B-L-E, and it's basic instructions before leaving earth. Amen. So if I'm going to heaven, I need this Bible. Amen. And this Bible will start out as my compass. Come on. Amen. And, and I begin to think about that, praise the Lord. And listen to what Jesus said. And I begin to compare that Bible uh, to the field compass that I had. Amen. Now, a field compass is one you stick in your pocket, you carry it around with you, and when you want to find a destination, you sit down and you plot out a course, and you can hold it in your hand, and you can go, amen, if, as long as you'll stay on course, you'll get to your destination. Well, that's what the Bible is. We can take it with us anywhere as we go. But I was going to be in a boat, and I couldn't operate a boat and sit there and hold on to a field compass. So I needed to mount a compass on my boat. Now listen to me. If you don't get the compass mounted right, you're not going to go in the right direction. So if we don't get the right start on this way of life, we're going to miss the mark when we come to the end. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. But I got to thinking about that thing. So I went and got me a field compass, and I got up on my boat there at the house, and I laid that field compass down in the center of my boat, got the center line of my boat, laid that field compass down, and then I took my compass that I was going to mount on my boat, and I lined it up with that field compass. Come on. That a way I know that no matter which way that boat goes, I'm in the right direction if I stay on that compass. Amen. Now he said over in John 5 and 39, he says, Search the scriptures for them, them you think you have eternal life, and they are they that testify of me. <laughs> Amen. Now you know there's got to be a starting place. Amen. And so whenever that I got that compass on there, Amen. I had to figure out how do I make my start. Well, there's a thing out at the end of the jetties. If you go two miles offshore out of the mouth of the St. John's River, there's a thing out there that's called a sea buoy. You get all of your, with the chart that you have, everything, every direction you want to go starts out at that sea buoy. Brother Bill, how do you do it? Well, first you've got to know where your destination is. Amen. I, I want my destination to be heaven. Just like I wanted my destination to be nine mile. I was starting out. I didn't know nothing about it. I wanted to make sure, amen, that I was headed in the right direction. Well, I found out what you do is you go out there to that buoy. First, you got to find the buoy. When you find the buoy, you put the stern of your boat against that buoy, and you get the compass headed in the direction you want to go. <laughs> amen. Could I say there? There's the buoy right there. That altar is the buoy. That's the starting place. And you got to get in line with what that altar brings, amen, which is salvation for our soul when we repent in order to get lined up in the right position. Now, I found out, praise the Lord forever, that I didn't want to just trust that compass because I didn't know exactly, amen, if that compass was right. It was going according to what I put it at. And I did the best I could. So I need.
needed some help, amen. I don't know about you. You might be trying to do the best you can to serve the Lord, but I've got news for you. You need some help. You need Jesus, the Son of God, to help you, amen, to make heaven your home and keep you in the right direction. Well, you know what I did? I got that thing mounted on there, amen. And so what I did is I went out there and I got all lined up and I know that the sun has been coming up out of the east, amen, ever since I was born. I know I could count on that sun. It wasn't going to change. It wasn't going to get off course. It's been coming the same route for centuries now. The same route. Amen. And I can't help but liken the S-U-N to the S-O-N. Amen. The Son of God has been the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I can trust and I can count on Him. Amen. So I didn't just go by the compass. I didn't go just by the chart amen the chart said run 90 degrees and you'll find the marker at nine mile so what I did I backed that boat up there I made sure that compass was sitting on 90 degrees and I looked at my bow rail there's a glitter amen from the sun on the bow rail are you still with me that's the chrome rail that goes around the front of the boat and whenever I started out on 90 degrees with that compass I kept my my eye on the sun and the glitter of the sun on the bow rail. Come on church you're not getting what I'm talking about tonight. Amen. I knew that if that compass was off that sun wasn't going to lie to me. Amen. There's one thing about it. No matter what comes my way I can count on the son of God. He's going to lead me guide me and direct me in the way he'd have me to go. Amen. So whenever we got started out there that's the two things that I tried to do. <laughs> amen. And you know what? If I'd have kept going and I had a little uh, amen, I had a little fellow there helping me trying to find it. Didn't know what I was looking for. <laughs> amen. But when I kept going, I kept on my eyes on the sun. <laughs> kept the compass in line. Amen. With what the chart said. Come on now. <laughs> if I'll keep my eyes on the sun <laughs> and keep my life going in the direction that the Bible says, <laughs> after a while I'm going to find glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Brother Billy, if I hadn't cut back on the throttle, I kept looking. I couldn't see nothing. I couldn't see nothing. Didn't know if I was on the right path or not. But I knew I was following the sun from right where I started at. Amen. If I hadn't cut back on the throttle, there was a little old ball about that big around. Amen. With a broom handle looked like sticking up out of the middle of it. And a little old flag, maybe about a foot long, and maybe about about eight inches wide at the front shaped like a triangle. If I hadn't have cut back and I kept following the sun, I'd have run over that thing. It wasn't big enough for me to see from shore. It wasn't big enough for me to see a mile away. But brother, when I got to it, I could see what it looked like. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. But now for me to get from there to another destination, you know what I had to do? I had to back up the back of that boat get out that chart come on now look at that chart find out where I wanted to go and then when I got a line where I wanted to go I had to see what degrees I needed to run I knew that compass was right the sun had proved that the compass was right the son of God has proved that this Bible's right amen I praise the Lord so what I did when I got to nine mile I backed up there got my stern lined up with that flag I got the reading to go to MR and I lined up on it and I watched that compass and I headed out and I tried to notice where the sun was at as I was going went right straight over there never been offshore in my life but went straight from one place to the other I'm trying to tell you if we'll get against the altar of God get down there and get things right and get our reading right amen we can make it to heaven tonight Praise the Lord. 
Oh, glory. Brother Willie, there was times that I'd be going through. The, listen to me. I'd be headed out there. Amen. And I'd see fish over there. And some of you never seen it. But I'm talking about just hundreds of fish hitting the water. Hitting them bait fish. Wanted to chase them so bad. Wanted to get out there and try to get a hook in one of those fish. But if I got off course, amen, I was going to be lost. And I couldn't find my way to where I was going. Amen. Oh, but you know what? I found out, and I'm not going to read all the scriptures. It'll take too long. But I found out, amen, they made a thing called a GPS. Amen. And just to let you know what it is, I sort of printed it out. A global positioning system is a satellite-based navigational system made up of a network of 24 satellites placed into orbit by the U.S. Department of Defense. GPS works in any weather condition, anywhere in the world, amen, 24 hours a day, and there's no subscription fee or setup charges to use a GPS. Some of you ought to be shouting, you don't you see me headed for the Holy Ghost? Amen. The Holy Ghost is a free gift of God when we get everything lined up. Come on now. Praise the Lord. It works 24 hours a day in any part of the world you want to go to. The glory to God. And there's no fee. Jesus paid the price. All you got to do is keep His commandments. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, it said, amen, it said for us to enter in the straight gate. Glory to God. Now, I got news for you. These uh, GPS, Brother Steve, like you got in your car, it won't work out there in the ocean. Come on. These land, these land uh, uh, GPSs won't work out there. See, there's obstacles here, and you got to make a turn in the right direction, but it's a straight line. When you get out there, come on now. And there's no obstacles. Guess what I found out? Amen. I found out when I put that GPS in. Amen. You still got to study. You still got to find out what the latitude and the longitude is for where you want to go. Come on now. Amen. When you find that and you put it in that GPS, amen, it'll keep you on track. It'll show a highway. Come on now on the one I got. It shows a highway. Amen. And if you set that thing, if you start getting off course, it'll start beeping. Amen. And you got to get back on course. That's what the Holy Ghost does. You get off course and he'll start beeping. Amen. Let you know. You're headed in the wrong direction. Hallelujah. Amen. But I also found out this. Amen. And this is what a lot of those turkeys do when they're going to take you out. Do you get to watch in their GPS? And you can set it to where if you get off course to the right, it will show that you need to steer to the right. Which is wrong. If you're off course to the right and you go to the right, you're going to get lost even worse. Amen. Or it'll show that you can, or you're off to the right and it shows you need to go to the left. Well, some of them set it opposite of the way they need to go so you can't get their readings. Amen. There's a whole lot just leading you off the path. Amen. And there ain't no alarm. But if you got it right, it'll tell you which way to steer right. Now, here's the good part of it. Whenever I come upon those fish, I could get off course. Now, my desire was to catch fish and big fish and plenty of fish. And when I seen those fish hitting out there, I could get off course and I could chase those fish all I wanted to. But the whole time, there was a beeper going off. Let me know I'm off course. Amen. If you go straight from this straight path with God, your conscience will start bothering you going off in your soul. Amen. And there ain't but one way for you to stop it and that's to get back on course. Praise the Lord. Brother Willie, I'd wander out there, catch the fish of water, and then I had to just keep working that thing till I got back on course. 
Amen. And here's the thing about it. Didn't matter how far off course I was, I had the destination in there. And it would pick up the correct path for me to go from where I was at to get to the destination I had. That's what the Holy Ghost to do, amen? You won't wander around out there and sin and get away from God without there's something warning you. You better get back in line. Amen? Praise the Lord. I hope I can get this across to you tonight. Amen? Oh, and then I remembered. We went out there one time. Praise the Lord. And I'm going to skip some of the scriptures. Amen. But we went out there one time. The first fellow I went out, his name was, was Ken Vaughn. He said, we're going five miles offshore. We got in his boat, had a big 19-foot North American. And we went out across there. And he didn't have no respect for the waves. We'd hit a wave and be airborne. Pow. Amen. I thought he's going to knock the bottom out of this boat. First time I'd ever been out there. And he said, we're going to five miles. We rode, and we rode, and we rode, and we rode. And I thought, my Lord, we've got to bend to five miles by now. And we just kept going. He's on course with his compass, amen. And we got out there. I don't know how long we rode. And then we looked off out there, and I said, hey, there's some boats over yonder. He said, no, it's this way. I said, but there's some boats over yonder. Let's go see where we at. <laughs> Amen. He gets over there where them boats are, and guess what? We're 21 miles offshore. <laughs> Amen. He's going wide open because he thinks he's on the right path, <laughs> but his compass is off, <laughs> and he's headed in the wrong direction. <laughs> if we hadn't have found somebody where there was a marker that would let let us know where we was at. We would have missed the place and no telling where we had ended up. Amen. So we got back over there and we started fishing and we sit there for a little while and we fishing, you know. And I said, Ken, I said, the boat's sinking. First time I'd ever met the guy, my son-in-law knew him, I didn't. I said, the boat's sinking. He said, the boat ain't sinking. I said, son, the boat's sinking. No, the boat ain't sinking. I said, why is the cooler floating back there in the back of the boat? We had sprung a leak and the boat was sinking. Amen. Turned the bilge pump on, got on back. Amen. And whenever we started out there, the next time I had my boat. And he said, where are we going? I said, we're going out to five miles. Amen. I meant five miles this time. I didn't mean 21 miles. I didn't mean TW. Amen. So we had, you better be careful putting your confidence in other people and their equipment. You better have it tuned in with God. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. Listen, we started off out there, and, and he, I, I got out there. We started at nine mile. I'm sorry. We got to nine mile, and I'm out there at nine mile, and he comes on the radio, and he says, where are you at? I said, I'm at nine mile. He said, no, you're not. I'm at nine mile. I said, Ken, you're not at nine mile. I can't see you nowhere. He said, well, where am I at? I said, I don't know. He said, but I see the flag. I said, go over and see what letters is on it. He goes over and finds out he's way off course. He's over at MR. Amen. He says, how do I get where you're at? I said, well, what you do is you line up. I got my chart out. Looked at the chart. I said, line up on your mark, and I give him the reading to go. And I said, and then when you start out, you start looking for us. Well, what he didn't know, there was another marker just three miles away. While it was a clear day, while he's coming over there, I moved to another marker. Amen. He got over there and he says, I can't find you. Don't know where yet. I said, well, look, uh, if you're where you're supposed to be, look to the north a little, east a little bit and you'll see us over there. There's boats there. That's us. So he comes over there. Amen. So you can't depend on what somebody else. You don't know the equipment they got. You don't know if they're using it properly. Amen. They might have something besides the King James Bible. They might be led astray, amen, because they're reading something and, and they're praying to somebody, amen, that'll pat them on the back. Glory to God. So he says, okay, and he comes over there. We sit there and fished a while, didn't do nothing. And so we decided, well, we're going to five miles. He says, okay, I'll meet you there. I back up, get lined up on the buoy, on the marker rather. And as I get lined up on the marker, I get ready, get my reading, get my compass set right, start out. And when I start out, he comes, takes off ahead of me, runs right across my bow. I said, got on ready, where are you going? I'm going to five miles. I said, not that way, you ain't. He says, 
said, according to my compass I am. I said, Ken, you better follow me. Amen. And we went on over, got line, straight line now. Straight line. I don't care where you at tonight. I don't care how far off course you got. You best get a hold of the Lord and get that straight line and get back on course. Amen. We got over there and then he followed me in. Well, during the week he had called me and he said, man, I don't understand this. He said, there's something wrong because my compass said that I was right. I said, well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll come by over there and I'll check it out for you. Well, how did you set yours up? I said, I got a fuel compass, put it down, made sure it was center of my boat, and I lined my compass up with it. We best take that Bible study it. Amen. Get our life lined up with it. I've never been to heaven, but I got an idea that that's going to take me there along with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So I go by his house and I get over there and he's not home. And I told his wife, I said, I come to look at Ken's compass. Would it be all right? And I had my field compass. <laughs> that's why you need to take this with you. When you go to a church and you hear a preacher preaching, you need to take this with you and you need to read along with him. Make sure he ain't leaving something out or adding something to it. Come on now. Make sure he's on the right path. Praise the Lord. So I get up in the boat and I got my field compass and laid a field compass down and his compass is perfect. Huh? How can that be? How can that be? How can his compass be perfect? Reading the same thing that my compass reads and yet he's going in the wrong direction. Well, I took my pocket knife out, laid my pocket knife up there, and when I did, his compass does this. I called him. I said, Ken, have you been laying your pliers or your knife or anything up on the dash close to your compass? No, I know better than that. I said, okay. I asked his wife, I said, can I get the key to his boat? She said, I don't know if he wants you cranking his boat and him not here or not. I said, I don't want to crank it. I just want the key. I just want to turn it on. Come out there, and I stuck that key in there and turned it, and it went 20 degrees. Had an electrical field that was interfering with the magnetic field. Amen? Come on. And it was throwing him off. Sometimes we need to be sure we got a clear channel with the Lord. Amen? We need a clear channel with the Lord because we ain't careful. There'll be some interference there. Amen. And that's the devil's job is to throw something in the works to get you off course. That's exactly what he tries to do with every one of us is get us off course. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we found out where it was and we fixed it. But what I'm trying to get to you tonight, church, is that devil's out there. We've got to have a sea buoy. We've got to have a place that we can line up. And we've got to have the instrument to line up with that will keep us on track. Amen. I'd much rather have a GPS than I had a compass. Listen to me, but I want both. If the power goes out, the GPS goes dead. That compass works always. Amen. Listen to me. The Holy Ghost, to me, represents that GPS. And as long as we got in contact with God and we got a good connection with God, the Holy Ghost will work and guide us. When we lose that contact or something gets thrown in our way and we begin to let it hinder us and get us off course, we better go back to the compass and get back online. Amen, or in line, rather. Praise the Lord. Amen. So I, I begin to think about it, and I begin to think about this trip to heaven, church. None of us has been there. But we need that sea boy, and that's this altar. I ever now and then, when I'd go out there, Brother Billy, I'd stop by there and check my compass with that sea boy and that chart and make sure it was still right. <laughs> Every now and then, you and I need to come back to this altar and make sure we're still on the right journey and the enemy hasn't thrown something up there to lead us off astray. Amen. In these experiences that I've had with the Lord, there's been a lot of distractions. Amen. Just like there was out there. Amen. And I, I'm not going to depend on somebody else. Went out there one morning. It was about a week before the Kingfish Tournament. Danny Rollison, a friend of Billy's. Amen. 
had his boat, a Boston Weller, and I had mine. And he put in and took off, and about the first time I'd met him. And he stopped out there, and I figured, he's waiting on me. So I put my boat in, and I took off, and when I started by him, he kept sitting there. I turned around and come back. I said, you going fishing? He said, my motor just quit on me. I said, well, you want me to pull you back to the bank? No, just pull me out to the jetties. He's going out there with a boat that has no power. Now, I don't know if you've ever been out there in that current or not, but there's times it'll take eight ounces of sinker to try to get to the bottom. Amen with that current. Amen. And all we had was CB radios. And I said, you sure? He said, yeah, just take me out there and I'll anchor off. So I carry him out there and drop him off, and he anchors off in a disabled boat and said, I'm afraid there's some folks spiritually sitting in a disabled boat, and they're just sitting there, just, just content to be anchored off. I'd call him every now and then. I went on offshore, and I'd call him every now and then, see how I was doing it, come up a storm out there. And he's another sun shining here. On the way back in, I stopped, and I told him in. Amen. You don't want to be in a disabled boat out there in a the current. Amen. Especially when the current's going offshore, away from safety. Amen. I'm trying to give you what I feel. The Lord used parables. I'm trying to use a parable tonight and give you a comparison. Amen. I had never seen a flag offshore. Amen. Didn't know what I was looking for until that experience at Nine Mile. But I knew I could depend on the sun. I'm here to tell you tonight, I might not be able to preach, uh, depend on the captain. I might not be able to depend on the first mate, but I can depend on the sun. <laughs> I might not be able to depend on the preacher. I might not be able to depend on the evangelist. The pastor might let me down, but I can depend on the sun. Hallelujah. That sun comes up every morning in the same spot. That shadow falls in the same place. <laughs> Amen. It's been doing it for years, and it's going to continue doing it until Jesus says that's enough. Amen. I could depend on him. And here's the good part about it. Amen. If you get offshore Jacksonville and your GPS goes out, your compass don't work, all you got to do is head due west. Are you listening? When you get out there and you don't know where you're at, which way to go, all you got to do is head back to that altar. And here's the good part about it, offshore Jacksonville. If you head due west, you're going to hit land somewhere. Come on. It might not be Mayport. It might not be Ferndina. It might be South Carolina. It might be down around Miami. But at least you're going to get back to a safe place so you can start again. Come on. Amen. So if you get out there and you get astray and you get stranded and you don't know just what to do, just turn around and come right back from where you started from and start all over again. Amen. If you're going to make it at anything, you're going to have to study. If I hadn't looked up to see how, to, I mean, as a matter of fact, when I got the GPS, guess what? I had to read the instructions to find out how to use it. <laughs> Come on. Here's a good part about it with the Holy Ghost. He starts giving you instruction before you ever receive him. Amen. Come on. I ordered that GPS by faith, believing it would do what they said it would do. Amen. But here's the good part about it. The Holy Ghost starts getting you all set up. So when he comes in, he said that he was with you. Jesus said he's with you. Amen. Had that old fuel compass. Uh, depended on how I used it. Come on. But he said he shall be in you. When a GPS takes over, it's a whole lot easier. Come on. Jesus said, if you keep my commandments, I'll send you another comforter. So what we got to do is let the Holy Ghost begin to guide us in our daily walk of life, and then he'll come in and he'll continue to lead us. But if we're not careful... That old devil will try to short out the connection so that we can't find heaven. I don't know about you. I want to make heaven my home tonight. Amen. I want to make heaven my home. Amen. Praise the Lord. There's an enemy out there that's fighting, doing everything he can. And he's trying to change it. Amen. And, and there's some folks, you know what they'll do? They'll say, well, I got a GPS. But it ain't the kind you use at sea or in the air. 
even if I've got the one I've got and I'm going to take a flight, I've got to know what to program in to where I'm going. And then once you get it programmed in, you've got to follow the instructions. If you're not going to follow the instructions, you're wasting your time. And that's where so many are tonight. They're wasting their time. Because Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And they're not willing to do that. Amen. They're not willing to do that. I enjoyed fishing offshore. Amen. And I enjoyed it even more when I found out I had a backup besides just my compass. I got a backup because you know what? The Holy Ghost will bear witness to this word. Amen. The compass, amen, will bear witness with what the chart says when you follow the chart. Come on. Amen. Are you there tonight? Are you following what the Lord says? Or are you trying to do it your own way? Amen. Are, are you really down to business with God? Are you really seeking the Lord? Did you start out in an altar? Or did you just stand in the congregation and repeat a prayer? Amen. You say, Brother Bill, I got saved at home. I'll guarantee you made an altar if you really got saved. It was some tears shed. Amen. After that, I got everything set up, knew what I was doing. It didn't bother me a bit to run 36 miles offshore in a 16-foot boat because I had enough sense to look and see what the weather was doing. Check out and see what the weather's and how rough is it going to be? How hard is this battle going to be? Amen. And then I had the assurance, amen, that I had all that I needed to find my way there and back. I got news for you. I'm not planning on coming back. I just want a one-way trip. Amen, just a one-way trip. But, friend, it starts out in an altar, an old-fashioned altar with a sincere heart. Amen. We went out there. And we was on that little, they called it a 17-foot boat. It was actually 16 foot and 2 inches. Because it was over 16 foot, they called it a 17-foot boat. Sport Craft Center console. Had a 90 horse, no, had a 110 horse heaven route on the back of it, and I'm glad it did. When I bought it, they said, you don't, we won't put that boat or you got on there. It's rated for a 90 horse. I said, I want the new boat, but I want my 110 on the back of it. They said, we can't do that because it's not rated for it. I said, if you can't put enough power on it that I want, then I don't want it. Guess what? All of a sudden, they could put that 110 on the back of it. A lot of people running around, they ain't got enough power. And the first storm comes along, they lose out. Amen? Brother Billy, we got out there. And I was rigging, and my son-in-law was there, and he was, his brother was running the boat, and I'm a rigging, and they watching, and we're headed off out there, and then we started trolling, and I look up, and they said, let's go to Nine Mile. And I looked up, and I couldn't see Mayport, and we wasn't two miles offshore. It was black. You couldn't see nothing. Storm, you could see a storm moving through. Let's go on out. I said, no, we're going to sit here and wait a while. We'll just keep, we'll troll the tide line. If we're going to Nine Mile, we'll troll out there. We'll take our time. We won't be in no hurry. Sometimes it's best not to get in a big hurry this sort of wait on the Lord and go with the Lord. Amen. After a while, I looked to the south down there, and there it looked like spots on the water, and I couldn't figure out what it was. After a while, I seen it was boats trying to get in because it was worse down there where they was trying to get me to go than it was back at the shore. We messed around there when we started in. I'm not kidding you. Waves was higher than the ceiling coming through the mouth of that river. And we would go up, and I'd get on that wave, and I'd try to ride it as far as I could. And when the boat would start to come off, I'd throttle back to nothing, and I'd watch that bow. And it reminds me of that song, Just As I Go Under. God comes on the scene. That bow would go down at that next wave, and it'd like about that much going under, and it'd start up. When it started up, I'd throw that throttle wide open and jerk it up, and ride another one as far as I'd go. Amen. When we get a wave of the power of God, we better ride it as far as we can if we're going to make it through the storm. Amen. We come through there. Amen. And when we got to the, to the river where it was smooth, my son-in-law jumped around and went to kissing that boat. His brother, he had been saying, let's go in all along. And his brother had been saying, no, let's stay out. And he said, I'm going to tell you something. You might be my brother, but the next time that I say, let's go in and you don't go in, he said, I'm going to you and put you overboard. <laughs> Amen. He was scared. I got news for you. 
perfect love casts out all fear. No matter what the storm brings, if you got that perfect love for Jesus, you're not going to fear what the storm brings. You're going to keep your confidence in him. I'm going to need the Lord when I go to leave here a whole lot more than I need him right now. Amen. I need the Lord when I face death. I'm going to need him. Praise the Lord. We got on home and Ken called Mike and he told Mike, he said, he said, Mike said, you ought to have been with us yesterday. He said, I thought sure we was going to drown. He said, we was coming through the jetties and said, those waves was high. We in a 25-foot boat and said, it liked to went under with us. And Mike says, what time was this? He said, we was out there too when we come through there. He said, it was about 3 o'clock. Mike said, well, it was about 5 after 3 when we come through. Well, what was y'all in? He said, we was in that little boat of bills. He said, ain't no way y'all come through there with that little boat. It's all in knowing how to handle the storm. Amen. It's all in knowing how to handle the storm. I thought one time we was going to get in trouble. It was a bigger boat than we was. Got in front of us, and he was running so slow, and I couldn't stay on the wave. And I was going to have to turn to the side to get around him. If you turn sideways in, a, in, a, in, the, in the weather like that, you're going to broach. That boat's going to roll over with you. I managed to get around him and get back on, on line. Amen. And I'm not so sure it wasn't the boat that Ken was on. But I'm here to tell you something. We need to know the master of the storm. We need to know, amen, that who can handle the storm. And I don't care how bad the troubles of your life get. If you'll put your confidence in Jesus, he will bring you through. You can depend on the Son. Amen. So we've got the starting place, the sea bull, if you will, on this journey to heaven. It's a straight path. You don't have to make any detours. Amen. It's a straight path. Praise the Lord. We've got this Bible, which is our chart and our compass. It tells us how, and it'll keep us on course. Amen. And then we've got the Holy Ghost, which is the same as having a GPS that guides you and warns you. Amen. Did you know something? There was even on that GPS, you could plug in where you're going, and when you got in so many hundred of yards of it, there was a beeper start going off. <laughs> well, glory. I believe the closer I get to heaven, after a while I'm going to hear the beeper go off. Glory to God. You know what? After a while there's going to be a shout of an archangel. Glory be to God, and this thing's going to wind down. Hallelujah. We're on our way to glory. Let's stay on the road. And it's a straight road, and it's narrow. Amen. All you got to do if you want to get lost is take your eyes off, amen, of where you're headed. Glory to God. I remember when I was a boy, and Brother Willie probably knows a lot about this. I remember when I was a boy, I went to North Carolina, and my uncle up there had a mule. Before he bought his tractor, he had a mule, and he plowed with that mule. He had corn out, and that corn was up probably a foot and a half, two foot, and he wanted to, to plow it. He takes that mule and goes down there, and he makes a pass down through there. Just perfect, boy. It just rolled that dirt up there just like it ought to. He says, all right, boy, I'm about 10, 11 years old. He said, all right, boy, it's your turn. Brother Billy, I was so afraid I was going to do it wrong. I got a hold of those plow hounds. That old mule was too fast for me. Amen. And here I went. I'm doing fairly good. And I look back to see how I'm doing. When I look back, here went the corn. Huh? You can't get your eyes on what's behind you. And stay on a straight course. That's why the devil wants us to look back. He wants us to look back. Because he knows we'll get off course. And Jesus said, he that put his hand to the plow and looketh back is not fit for the kingdom of God. Amen. There's nothing to turn back to. I hope that you've got something out of this tonight. Amen. Jesus used parables, and I believe that's a parable that he's using tonight to help us to see. Amen. Glory to God. You can't depend on what somebody else has got and how they're doing because they might not be set up just right. Amen. Praise the Lord. I know in this day and time we're reading all kinds of Bibles, but I think I'll just stick to this old King James Bible. It brought me this far, and I believe it'll take me home. Amen. I believe I'll just depend on the Holy Ghost. He's brought me this far. Matter of fact, it was he that, that spoke to me and gave me this invitation to start with. Amen. He said, no man comes into the Father unless he comes by the Son. And no man can come unless he's drawn. 
There's no way to God without you come through Jesus. Jesus is it. He's the only way that there is to enter into the kingdom of God. And listen to this, and I'm going to come to a close. He said, I'll go with you always, even to the end of the world. You know what that tells me? He's right there for me if I'll just hold on to his hand. And he's going to bring me through. And I like that song that Sister Martha sings once in a while. And I like what the psalmist says. He said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Are you listening to me? He said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. He didn't say I'm going to come out of it. I believe what he's saying, whenever I get there to death, I'm not going to fear no evil. For thou art with me. God's going to be right there. Amen. Praise the Lord. I believe I can depend on him. Amen. I, I, I trust the Lord with that. Praise God forever. I'm going to need him whenever I start to give up the ghost. Just like I need him now. And it's that same Holy Ghost that gave us the invitation to come and be a child of God. He's the same one that will lead us to sanctification. He's the same one that will keep us on this straight and narrow road and lead us home to glory. Amen. Are you on the right road? Have you took inventory lately just to see? Has the devil thrown something out there flashy? You've never seen nothing. Do you see all them fish? They're hitting them bait fish. And they're just all over the place. I mean, just a pot of maybe 50 yards uh, a circular. And there's all these little fish. That they're coming up hit. And you can tell where they're at because whenever they start to feed, the birds come and start feeding from the top. When you see the birds hitting the water, that's the place to fish. Amen. I, I believe the Bible says something about the, the, the eagles will be where the carcass is. Hmm. Come on. Amen. So what you do is you get something that will be as near as you've got in your tackle box to those little fish and you start casting. And they'll hit it. Amen. There's some blessings along the way. Amen. There's some blessings along the way. We might come to church and we figure, well, we're just going to have a regular old service and all of a sudden the Holy Ghost comes down and he starts to bless. How many times has it happened? But here's the thing about it. I believe with all that's within me. Amen. When things is hard and things is rough, if I'll just stop and begin to look to him, begin to praise him. You just look back and see what he's done for me, what he's already brought me through. It'll give me confidence to know that he's going to bring me through the storm. Amen. That song they sing, just as I go under, he comes on the scene. God comes on the scene. Amen. Where are you at tonight? If you don't know for sure that you're on that straight path, this right here will be your starting place. This right here will get you in line. And God's Spirit, His Holy Ghost, will lead you. Where are you at tonight? If we could get this across to folks, there's none of us actually been to heaven in this natural body are you listening to me and you say brother bill do you really believe that this is a reality well let me tell you right after i got saved and first got in the pentecostal church left the baptist church got in the pentecostal church i came down with what they called scarlatina said it was a mild case of scarlet fever this is when my dad died said it was a mild case of scarlet fever and I remember laying on that bed one night, burning up with a fever over there on Old King's Road. And I can't explain it all to you, but I remember like it was looking from the ceiling and looking down on my body, laying on that bed. And somebody called a Pentecostal preacher. And I remember them laying that phone upside of my ear. And I remember hearing him praying. I don't remember no more about that night, but the next day I began to get better. Amen. I believe there is out-of-body experiences. Amen. And I believe that makes me know that there's a reality. When I face death, I'm going to leave this old body. And I'm going to be with the Lord. But there's a lot of preparation to be made between now and then. And he said if we have to hold out to the end, we've got to be faithful. To him that overcometh all these trials the enemy's throwing our way. To he that overcometh. The same shall be saved. I've not made it yet. I'm still on the journey. 
Amen. But I want to fight a good fight. And I want to keep myself tuned in to the Spirit of the Lord. What, what would happen tonight if Jesus came back right now? Where would you spend eternity? Amen. They, they some that I know. They've got the idea, well, it's just too hard here. And they took their life. Thinking they would end it all. Listen to me. I helped a brother in the Lord preach his niece's funeral. He wanted me there. He said, Brother Bill, they want me to preach your funeral. And he said, I don't know if I can make it through it or not. She was a young girl, and she hanged herself. He said, I don't know if I can make it or not. I helped him preach that funeral. And we left there, and we went to one of these tribulation house, I guess you call it, at this church. And we went through there. When we got through it all, Nancy was small. She was with us. We got through it all. I knew the pastor, and we went back into the room where the pastor was because they have you come through. That's the last room you go through, and he talks to you about your soul and if you're saved. And we got back there, and they started talking, and they had this one little young preacher there, sort of a smart aleck, really, to be honest with you. He knew it all. Little short fella. Like, there ain't nothing wrong with short people. I don't like them because they try to tell tall people what to do and say that's what God made them for. <laughs> Amen. What one boy told me said, I said, I don't know why God made short people to tell tall people what to do. I said, uh huh. But listen to me. We got to talking, and I just, I, you know, I want to know what the other face believe. And so I just asked him, I said, uh, let me ask you a question. We was fixing to leave. I said, let me ask you a question. We just came from a funeral where this girl hanged herself. Now, do you think she went to heaven? Is there any possibility she went to heaven? And before the pastor was saying this young, young preacher, oh yeah, oh yeah. If she's ever been saved, she's in heaven. I said, I don't know if she's ever saved or not, but I know that she wasn't serving the Lord. She died. Might be that when she was a young girl, she might have been saved. I don't know. I really don't know that much about her. Well, if you've ever been saved, you're going to heaven. Don't matter what, you're going to heaven. I said, if you kill yourself, you're going to heaven? Well, certainly. I said, well, I'm going to leave you with this. And I want you to think about it. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. And another, they will not follow. And you can't tell me that God was speaking to that girl, telling her to take her life. She was listening to the wrong voice. Whenever the enemy starts putting that towards us, we're listening to the wrong voice. When he starts trying to tell you, you can just go out and live any old kind of way. We're listening to the wrong voice. Because Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. We need to study to find out what his commandments are. Amen. This altar is open tonight. If you've got a need, amen. Now some folks say, pray for me. I can pray with you, but I can't pray for you. You've got to do your own praying. You've got to make up your mind that you want to make heaven your home. You've got to make up your mind that you're going to hold out. Amen. The altar's open. Anybody want to pray?